Yo, what up Jelly Rings? Happy Monday and welcome back to another Modern Monday gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Boros Koldoth Rebirth all-in hyper aggro deck that Mooksin took to a 5-0 finish in an MTGO Modern League. Now, I remember Mooksin. We played against Mooksin more than once on the channel. I can still picture his avatar in my head. It's like that froggy looking Atog thing. I don't know if he was playing this deck when we played against him, but we did play a deck very similar to this uh, recently on the channel. Now this has got to be the cheapest deck that I've ever seen 5 a League. Um, like you see like back in the day, um, there's people who were 5 a Leagues occasionally with 8-WAC, but those decks had Goblin Guides, so they were like $100 decks, but this is a $57 deck. $57 and at 5 a League, that's, that's crazy. And this deck looks very similar to the Pioneer Boros Tokens deck that we did a deck tech of on the channel a couple weeks ago. They both have the same kind of like unique synergies to them that you don't really see anywhere else. So maybe these people just found like the perfect recipe to make a brand new good setup for an aggro deck. So I'm super excited to show it off to you guys and see if we can do super good with it. So as always, if you wanted to try this deck out for yourself on MTGO, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code MarinMoon to save 15% off. And you can rent today's deck as well as any future decks we play on the channel. And if you wanted to check this deck out in paper, consider purchasing through our decklist link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link and anything you purchase through there really helps out the channel. And of course, thank you to all my patrons who've been scrolling at the bottom of the screen this whole entire time. It is because of you guys that this channel is possible. So thank you very much for your support. And with that, let's jump right into the deck tech and the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. So this deck is pretty complex, but pretty straightforward at the same time. So let's go right into our Koldotha Rebirth package. It wants you to pay one single red mana and sacrifice an artifact to make three 1-1 one, one red goblins. And if you have Ornithopter or Memnite, they're zero drop artifacts, allowing you to cast Koldotha Rebirth on the first turn. And on the second turn, Venerated Loxodon along with Koldoth Rebirth should be very easy to convoke out and it's going to put a 1-1 counter on each creature that convoked it. So it's going to make your board very fat and set you up for winning on turn 3 or 4 depending on what you got in your hand. So let's go into the next package. So we got Toolcraft Exemplar which also wants you to have an artifact because it's going to get plus 2 plus 1 and a 1 mana 3-2 seems pretty good to me. So Three of an Inspector makes a clue token when it enters. And note that that clue token is an artifact that you can sacrifice to Koldoth or Rebirth or trigger the Toolcraft Exemplar, or both. And then we got Bomac Courier, gets you some card advantage. It's also an artifact, Signal Pest is as well, so you can sacrifice them to Koldoth or Rebirth if you need to, but they're just pretty good attackers and Signal Pest rewards you for going wide with something like Koldoth or Rebirth because it's got that battle cry ability. And another thing that we got to reward us for going wide is Reckless Bushwhacker Package. So the Reckless Bushwhacker Package works so well with Devastating Summons. So the plan of Devastating Summons is to win the game on the spot with it because you float a bunch of mana, sacrifice all your lands, you're going to create like two three threes or four fours, and then you're going to use your floating mana to surge your Reckless Bushwhacker, give them all haste, and go really wide along with whatever you had on the board previously, probably a uh, board of goblin tokens that you have one more counters on them from venerated loxodon and that is going to be a massive amount of damage you're going to beat face that way and then on to the last card of the deck that didn't fit in any particular category springleaf drum is good for surging bushwhacker or ramping you into experimental frenzy or just sacrificing to a koldotha rebirth um now experimental frenzy is a singleton that we have another one of in the sideboard for certain situations depending on how grindy the match is going to be but it lets you play off the top of your library and in a deck like this where you only got 16 lands and everything is cheap you can kind of just storm off if you get in that kind of scenario as i just said we got 16 total lands it is very budget because it's a $57 deck and the Dark Souls Citadels are in there for tech that you can sacrifice to Koldoth Rebirth if you need to get in that scenario. So let's go on to the sideboard. We got a play set of Tormod's Crypt, which you can sacrifice to uh, Koldoth Rebirth also if you have a redundant one. Exiles of Graveyard for zero mana. We got a play set of Galvanic Blast, can shock a creature or deal four to a creature or player if you have three or more artifacts, which should be very possible in this deck. And then we got a play set of Smash to Smithereens if we're going up against an artifact deck because it can destroy an artifact and deal three to face. And since this is an aggro deck, dealing three to face is pretty good. And then we got the package of one basic planes and two copies of Experimental Frenzy because Experimental Frenzies are four mana 
And since we only got 16 lands, it's not that reliable to get up to, uh, to the four drop spell. So we have the extra planes in the sideboard for the experimental frenzy. And that's going to come in against, I assume, control or grindy matchups where they're going to sweep your board or be able to be quick enough to deal with your board. So you're going to need some kind of late game power. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. Got a game here against SBS0311 and we are going to be in the draw. Low Caro Caro Bonito. Jank it up. We are janking it up today. We're keeping that. Uh, thank you for the tier one subscription for six months in a row. Welcome back to the marination. Enjoy the emotes. How are you doing today? Ooh, venerated loxodons, amazing. All right, Koldotha Rebirth, go. And the next turn, we go Bomat Courier into Venerated Loxodon and make them all thick boys. Trying to get people to play modern over webcam. Moon's Keen, though. Wait, what does that mean? Noon's Keen, though. What does Noon's Keen, though, mean? No one? Oh, no one's Keen, though. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's difficult, dude. Play modern over webcam. Okay, so here's what we're going to do, and it's going to be toasty as a zosty. Bomat career. Start your Bomat career here today at the Carrington Community College. Hashtag not sponsored. I don't even know what that college is for. I just heard about it in a commercial five years ago. Okay, now turn two. This is uh, 12 power on board. We just got to swing twice. They scoop? Dude, you could easily just draw Titan and Simic Growth Chamber and we die. <laughs> okay. What the heck? They just scooped the entire round. Come on, dude. You know what I put in the room? No quit outs. Screw you, dude. I'm showing this on YouTube so everybody can see. <laughs> Got a game here against Young Schwells and we are going to be on the draw. With some all-in Hyper Koldotha Boros Aggro and that looks... Oh, no, that's a Devastating Summons. I thought that was a... Uh... I thought that was what I thought it was. What do you know? You know, I might keep this because I can turn two Loxodon still. I can use Devastating Summons to make... Oh, wait, no, I have a colorless source. I need another colored source. Okay, I'm going to keep it in hope. Yo, what's up, Samurai Dancer? So, yeah, a little character. It's hard to do... Uh, Magic the Gathering over, over face. Oh, that's a good draw, actually. That lets me do the turn, too. Turn to uh, Loxodon. And then we can Devastating Summons. No, they're going to take my summons. Hello. Yo, emote explosion. Emoji. See, why are the booties and the, and the hellos not show up in the emoji explosion? I don't get it. We just got ducks and GGs now. They take one of my venerated Loxodons. Uh, Wolf Spider 799609. Thank you for the follow. All right, let's go with. Um. Oh, I could have went devastating summons into. Oh man, I screwed up. This could have been a whole lot better, but I, I just done goofed right there. I was I was looking at chat and I I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Oh, uh, Wolf Spider, thank you for the follow. How are you doing today? What's up, Sir Bread Ticks? Good to see you again. Dang, you caught me when I'm not using face rig. Yo, what's up, Sergio? What's up, MP? What's up, Samurai Dancer? Assassin Archer who gets EXP for every kill. Time to pick up a scythe and get wretched. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, I know exactly what we're going up against. Heliod deck. Um, okay, so we're just going to go to combat and swing all and not care about venerated Loxodon. I guess so. Nothing else to do. Oh, they're chumping venerated Loxodon. Okay. That's a fine trade. That is a fine trade. I will accept that. 
I get my thing back. Okay, question is, can I actually play Venerated Loxit on here? No, I don't have enough colors. I need a... Oh, oh this is a white source, actually. So, Devastating Summons makes two bodies. And then I go through an Inspector. No, I'm one short. I'm one short. So I just have to go Draven Inspector here and pass and crack it. Yeah. Draven Inspector. Oh, let me crack the clue now because I might actually draw a zero drop like a Memnite and I didn't. All right, cool. Pass turn. Oh, let me catch up on chat. Their motto learn is a skill move out of your mom's basement wasn't well recepted. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> Long time to catch you live. Welcome back, Sergio Scora. Yo, Jackal Shin, duckies. Quack. Okay, uh, I can do everything here. Yeah, let, let me just, I can just do everything. So let's go. I mean, I'm committing super hard here, but probably worth it. Bomac Courier, Bomac Career, Coolcraft Exemplar. Devastating summons. Venerated Loxodon. Um. And what else do I tap? Raven Inspector. All right, go to combat. Pump the tool craft. Swing with these boys. Swing with them boys. Da 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 da, -da inspector gadget. Da 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 da. -da. Oi. Why Mulligan? The fine keep. Oh, you're trying to get by this this uh this C thing because you can't go play at your LGS, so you want to play with your friends over face cam. But it's 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 hard to get a good angle. A lot of people don't have room in their house. All right, we committed super hard. We have nothing else to play. Ooh, play a mountain, so now I can crack Bowmat Courier if I need to. The opponent's hanging in there really well with his giver of runes. You are the best angle. You need a better angle. How's it going, Witch Doctor? Kaizen the Plague. Oh yeah, I've seen that. I, I like that. I like that uh, Mardu legend a lot. Except the problem is, would I rather just play Queen Marchesa or Mathis Fiendseeker uh, Politics? Or do I, would I play that guy? That's the question. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I, I think that it makes sense to just play one of those. those and like, I, I don't know. I don't know if Kelson the Plague is, is worth it. Okay, we still have a pretty thick board. The opponent can now gain some life with Shamlet. They just scoop it up. Sweet. They're not going to beat our four four fours. Man, this deck is quite powerful. All right, so against that deck, maybe I want Galv Blast, but if they have a turn one giver, then it's suddenly bad. So I think I'm just going to leave it the same. However, I could just remove the Experimental Frenzy on the draw and just bring in a Galv Blast just because. Yeah. Could be clutch. Isn't that an old card? Whenever a creature dealt damage by equipped creature dies, return that card. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's an old card. Oh, so you can start killing creatures and gaining control of them, but you only kill X ones. But you ha you have to give them death touch. So it's like a super Voltron deck, but you need a lot of protection. You're gonna need that deck to be super like committed to Voltron. They're gonna have to have giver of runes. 
Mother of Runes, Swift Foot Boots, Lightning Greaves, um, probably uh, what's Angelic Angelic Renewal or what? What do you call that card? That's like two mana. If a creature dies, return it to the battlefield. It's like Angelic something. All right, what am, what am I doing here? I don't have a red source, unfortunately, because this is budget. If I had a red source, it was, would have been really good, though. So I think I'm going to have to take a mole. Um, yeah, this looks better. Um, the question is, what am I throwing away? So if I... Okay, turn one. It's got to be either Signal Pest or Bomat Carrier that I throw away because I can only cast one. So what I'm going to do is go Battlefield Forge, Springleaf Drum, Ornithopter, something. Could be Bomat Courier. Could be uh, Signal Pest. I probably want to keep Signal Pest. Because in turn two, I go Planes, and then I can invoke out the Loxodon. And then I have two Flyers. Or I could just keep all of my creatures and throw away the Spring. No. I'm, still, I'm sorry, Bomat Courier. This hand's probably not going to win. Especially if we get Thought Seized. Yeah, of course. No, we lost. They take our venerated locks it on and we have no more power. Gift of immortality. No, no, no. Two mana, angelic something. It's an enchantment. If a creature would die, sacrifice this enchantment and return that creature to the battlefield. Also, there's Kaya's ghost form. Right. Ornithopter. Springleaf dumb. Signal Pisset. Go. Well, at least with double signal pest, we can. Oh, please don't tide hollow scholar me. Thank you. Oh, please hurt yourself. All right, signal pest. Um, let's sacrifice this springleaf drum here. You called author rebirth. Now double uh double signal pest with all of this is great. Just don't you dare cast legion's end. <laughs> Yes, that, wait, no? Yes, that card, that card. One in a white. Enchantment. Creature dies, sacrifice angelic renewal, and reanimate that creature. So you can even kill your opponent's creature and use angelic renewal to get it back. Oh, Bushwhacker! If only I kept a thing. All right, so let's get in there. Everything. Whole board of two power dudes, except the signal pests. Trading giver for one of my goblins. They're down to six. Dude, what is up with this, this deck? What is up with this Magic the Gathering deck? Title of Sculler. Okay. Oh, they're going to take my bush whack. Well, then they die. <laughs> yeah, they're dead. Because double signal pest ornithopter is four in the air. Dude, this deck is kind of crazy. <laughs> like, straight up. And it's only 57 bucks. Got a game here against Kluges. That sounds dirty. Uh, what'd you, you want to die roll? We're going to play first. Yup, with some Boros all in hyper aggro. And I think that's a keep. It's pretty good to me. I am going to end up sacking uh, Dark Steel Citadel, but I am going all in here. This is especially good on the play, too, so thank goodness. We're going to start on Toolcraft Exemplar because he deals more than the Bomad does. Like, we hardly care about Bomad's discard and your hand ability here. Like, it might be a little bit more worth it to run Ginger Brute in this deck over Bomat Courier, just because it can potentially be evasive. Every point counts to get that final bits of reach in the mid-game, if, if they survive to that point. Oh, heck yeah, Tron. We can destroy Tron. Unless they get to all his dust on turn three or, like, Worm Coil Engine, and then we die. Um, Let's go Signal Pest, actually.
Go to combat, pump here, getting for three. Oh, do you got dismember? Okay, dismember's a f dismember's fine. And then let's uh hold off a rebirth. Here. And the next one we're getting in for a lot. We're getting in for nine damage. Or eight damage rather. Sorcerer Spyglass, sure. They're probably gonna name Bowmat Courier, because it's the only thing in here that can do anything with Sorcerer Spyglass. I mean technically Experimental Frenzy has that ability, but we're not getting there. Gotta be the courier. Ooh, and I drew that. Sweet. Now, because of that devastating summons, I can now sacrifice my two lands and make two two twos. Get in there. We're bringing them down to eight, and we have well over lethal on board. All right, opponent, what do you got? A thought not seer won't do it. Oh, a Ballista would be a little annoying, but Thought Not Seer is not going to do it. That's not enough. I'm going wider than your aunt, but not quite your mom. You're, it's impossible to go wider than your mom. All right, getting like that. Getting there. All right, sweet. Eldrazi Tron. Um, I don't think I want Smash to Smithereens. I don't think I want Galv Blast, but I don't really need Experimental Frenzy here, do I? I don't think so. So might as well bring in um bring in three Galv Blasts actually over the frenzy and two Springleaf drums. I kinda like that. Let's do it. <laughs> um If this was a cold author of birth, I would keep this, but it's not, so. Um, this hand does turn on Galv Blasts, but I only have two power. I could commit my land to make two one ones, but is that really worth it? I mean, I still got mana with the Spring Leaf Drum. I just don't think this will get there. Let's mulligan. Okay, this looks better. So let's keep it. And throw away one of the ornithopters. Map. All right, inspiring vantage. Bring leaf drum. Ornithopter. Hold off the rebirth. And pray that I top deck a loxodon. Do they have turn three Tron? No, it's a miracle. Okay, then Kaluges and I resonate with each other. We see eye to eye. Because whenever I play Tron, I never get it on turn three, ever. Probably done it twice in my life. All right, get in there for three. Let's swing with the Ornithopter to send a signal. Or just because I'm too lazy to click on it to untap it. Okay, they're going to go crack in their map. If they can't get Tron on turn 3, then usually they go get Eldrazi Temples. And they did. Alright. Now they can Thought Not Seer here, see that we have nothing for them to take. And they proceed to wall us for the rest of the game. Man. Well, I'm probably going to concede. Yeah. I don't think there's any outs now. I got to get a better opener. That was a pretty weak opener. Let's try this again. Would you like to play first? Sure. Mulligan the Zero Lander. Oh, this is not good. 
I mean, this is turn two. I make two two twos with devastating summons, but I don't think that'll get there. That is not going to win the game. So let's go to five, I guess. Okay, we're keeping this one. I need some kind of power, so I have to keep my Loxodon or my Reckless Bushwhacker. If I keep my Reckless Bushwhacker, then I go turn one, Signal Pest. Turn two, I go Ornithopter Bushwhacker. And then that's going to get me in there for how much? One, two, three, four, five, six. Only six on turn two. I don't think that's enough. If I keep the locks on and put away the bushwhacker and the ornithopter, where does that leave me? I don't know. I can't really do this math. So I would go turn one, full mech courier, turn two, signal pest, then turn three, draw land, play venerated locks on. All right. Gonna have to be what we do. And the opponent kept their seven card key. They have a ballista at all. We're mega screwed. Oof. They said oof to our mulligan. Boy, you keeping? All right, Bomac career getting for one. Hers is mine. The map from Dora. Come on, give me a Thraben. No Thraben. But at least I got the land that allows me to play Loxodon next turn. Oh, turn three Tron, of course. I wish I had Blood Moon in my board. I would love to slam a Blood Moon right now. Ooh, I got a Thraben Inspector. Nice. Extra body. I can always use an extra body. Okay, so our board's thick, but do they have Worm Coil? I don't think I've ever seen Worm Coil in Eldrazi Tron, but they could have all his dust. Tarn the Den Creator, and if they get an Ensnaring Bridge, then I'm probably dead, right? They got a bridge, but their hand's six cards in it, so... What am I fearing? Uh, play a rum, I guess, which I can't even activate. Alright, I guess I kill Karn and attack them. They're down to nine. All right, can they empty their hand here? Found out Seer, sees nothing. This members the Loxodon, but they're down to five. Ooh, another signal pest. Uh, let me crack this clue real quick. Thanks, Steel Citadel. Alright, well, let's play the Signal Pass first main phase so that I can probably crack the Bomat Courier upon combat. Alright, get some Trigs. Get some toasty Trigs. They're probably blocking Thraben Inspector, because I'm going to sack my Bomac Courier anyways. And they do. Going down to one. Do I dare? 
Blazing Sound. Thank Marin you for the subscription. Marin M. Ducky. Thank you for the Twitch Prime for two months in a row. Welcome back to the marination. Uh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let me make moves. We're going to cold author a birth on this. All right. Um, thank you for your Twitch Prime for two months in a row. Welcome back to the marination. Thank you for your generosity. How are you doing today? Mystic Frog. Well, it's going to make it harder to empty your hand, ain't it? You're not going to stop my creatures. They all got one power. You got to empty your hand completely for that bridge. Ballista would be their best play. If they have a Ballista. If they had a Ballista, though, they would have done it for all of the mana. Blast Zone don't do it either, but it could help. Yeah. Alright, what you got to survive here? Ballista on X's 1 would do it. And they don't have it! We took down Aldrazi Tron! Yes! Yes! Dude, this deck is taking down some serious stuff. It's taking- it's like, it loses to Bruise, but it wins against top tier decks, except Bant Snow. Like, it's taken down... Technically taking down Amulet Titan. Got a game here against Django Darksaber, and we're gonna be on the draw here with some all-in Boros Koldatha. Um... This is going to be probably a keep. I do need one more mana. But this could be pretty nutty. If I top deck a land, this could be pretty nutty. Very nutty turn two if I top a land. Koldatha. Oh, the, oh I thought this was a Koldatha. Um, so this would have actually been a terrible hand. I thought it was a Koldatha, but we topped Koldatha, so it was saved. Alright, Taffa Red here. And play Koldatha. Backing Ornithopter. Alright, deck, give me a land, please. Glad to hear, doing well. All right, okay, it's uh, it's boring snow band control. The deck that nobody likes fighting. And now they have a fat lifelinking batter skull next turn, so I need the land, give me the land. Didn't get the land. All right, play Toolcraft Exemplar. Play Toolcraft Exemplar. All right, pass a turn. They're going to batter skull us and we're going to die. <laughs> but it is what it is. Ban control or ban snow is top tier meta, a top tier in the meta for a reason. Easy, easy, cheesy wins. Come on, give me that land. Give me that land. Still no land. All right, I'm just going to scoop. Right. Like, I'm not, I'm not about to beat this batter skull. This is definitely a scoop now. Gonna go stream Jackbox. Good luck, Cross. Have fun. Alright, um, we are going to bring in Smash to Smithereens. Let's bring in three of them, because I only need to draw one. Galf Blast is not bad either. Because I can actually kill the Stoneforge before it gets out the Batter Skull. So let's cut Experimental Frenzy. Let's cut Springleaf Drums. And let's cut one Bomat Courier. And run it like that. See, I, I, I've seen a lot of people and a lot of my friends stream Jackbox, but I don't know what it is. Like, what, what is Jackbox? Is it like Quiplash? Uh, would you like to play first? Yes. Um... No, nah, I don't think it'll do. I need a second land. And it's not reliable to pray for a second land in here. That's gonna be a five. 
Guess I'm keeping that one. I got, I need some kind of power, so I gotta keep the Loxit on. So I think I have to throw away probably Raven Inspector and uh, Darkseal Citadel. Yeah. But well, maybe I keep Dark Souls Citadel just in case I top deck Koldatha. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw away Battlefield Forge and Thraben Inspector. Let's go with Toolcraft Exemplar. The best top deck would be the uh Koldatha. Whiplash is a jackbox game. Oh, so it's just party games. Party games are over the phone. Anyone can play anywhere if they have internet. So it's basically Jackbox is just something that you play with viewers. Wishbacker. All right. Getting there for three, I guess. They shocked. Wait, what are we going up against again? I kind of forgot. Oh yeah, Bant Boring Control. Bant Boring Tribal. I gotta admit I like it though. I, I like I like Bant Snow. Um, I gotta admit, cause like if I did not, if I was not a YouTuber and I was still just like a modern, you know, grinder and didn't, you know, have any... I would just like still be playing modern tournaments and brewing up my own decks. I would probably be playing Bands No at some point. Because like, like I said, and everybody knows this since the start of my YouTube channel, is that I always mess around with green-white decks. I go Band, I go Abzan, I go, you know, any combination of green-white X. And I mess around with whatever I can. Um, alright, we're gonna probably go Venerated Loxanon on here. So let's, let's do that. I assume the what they got here is a nice vein codal. No, 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 float mana first. All right, devastating summons. They counter this, we die. If we, if we counter this, it's a concession. Ice vein codal, mana leak. That'll do it. All right, I was just gonna go summons into venerated loxodon, get a really thick board. Um, but countering that and making me sack my lands, we'll do it. Got a game here against Human Dream, and we are going to be on the play with some all-in Boros aggro, and that looks amazing. Super gooch. Um, you know, I don't know if I want to turn one uh, Koldatha here, or if I just want to turn one Signal Pest. Because Signal Pest plus Ornithopter... Oh no, that doesn't because Bone Curry or Mem Knight on turn two. You know what? Cause that's I'm gonna be swinging for four rather than swinging for three. Yeah, that makes more sense. So Dark Souls Citadel, Signal Pest, Mem Knight. Make him think we're on affinity. Tapped Sacred Foundry. Ooh, Devastating Summons is sweet. Womack Courier. Uldotha Rebirth. Getting there for four. Now pray they're not a Planeswalker control deck that has a play set of Deafening Clarion and Anger of the Gods and Sweltering Suns. Because I have seen those. Are they scooping already? What are they? Oh, going to sideboard, I guess. I don't know what they're- are they on burn? No, if they were on burn, they would have done something on turn one. What deck goes Sacred Foundry go? It's gotta be a Boros control deck. Or like Boros stacks or something. I'm gonna leave it the same. Jeskai? I mean, Jeskai can technically go tap land on turn one. But if they were going to play a tap land on turn one, it'd likely be a Hollow Fountain or Steam Vents. They only play one Sacred Foundry. 
Um, this hand's a little awkward. I don't think I can keep this. I'm going turn one toolcraft exemplar, turn two signal pest, attack for three. I need land drops, and this this deck can't reliably draw lands. So I think I can mole here. That's better. Let's keep that and throw away. Probably devastating summons here. Oh no, what if Foothills tells me? Oh, it is Jess Guy. I was gonna say, what if Foothills tells me that it's probably like some kind of deck that has Anger of the Gods, and it probably does. Demons plus Anger plus. Okay, you know what? No, this has probably gotta be um, Jess Guy Ascendancy. Uh, not Jess Guy Ascendancy, but Four Color Ascendancy. Because why would it Foothills? That's the part that's freaking me out. Um. All right, let's get out Signal Pest here, because it hits just as hard as a Koldatha Rebirth would. So might as well get this Lord out first. Yeah, definitely Just Guy Tennessee. Or yeah, for sure. Maybe it's Bring the Light. All right, how much damage is this? That's three. They're down to 12 now. All right, please don't. Please don't wrath our board. That's all we got. Oh, we lost here. This is, um, um, what's it called? Indo Polymorph? Yeah, there's Emrakul. Indomitable Creativity. I was, I was in the middle of saying that. Signal Pest. I mean, we might live. We're getting in for a lot here. This is a lot of damage. Okay, I'm gonna sack the Bomac Courier. More creatures that I can't play. They're down to three. I might still have this. All right, gets in with Emrakul. We're gonna sack Ornithopter, Land, Land, Memnite, Goblin? Goblin? This is two in the air and three on the ground. So I forgot who originally, it was like O, Omaha, Omen, something, something with an O person who brewed this deck. And then Cherry X-Man was the one who made that other variant. And then it, then that's when it got spawned into the community. All right. Well, if they got nothing here, if they got nothing here, this is lethal. Come on, please. No. Oh no, got them to just one? Just one? That'll do it. Man, so close. Got them to one. All right, I won't have the time for Experimental Frenzy here, so let's bring in a Galv Blast. Let's bring in a couple more Galv Blasts over... Let's just let's just bring in two and cut a cut a spring leaf drum. Try it like that. But I guess the remove I guess the removal spell would technically okay, it's too late. I was gonna bring in all the Gal Blast because technically a removal spell stops the indomitable creativity or polymorph. Would you like to play first? Yes. Uh I mean it's slow, but yeah.
Can't believe we got a opener with this deck that doesn't have a turn one play. Well, it's a good thing their mana base is really painful. So at least we can get some free damage. Jocks the steam vents and does nothing. Holds up a bolt, probably. Raven Inspector. All right, let's go Ornithopter. Surge of Bushwhacker. And get in there for three. And the next turn, we'll just go with uh, Surge, another Bushwhacker, and get in there for a bunch. And then we can play a Loxodon, Convoke out a Loxodon. I can just Convoke out the Loxodon next turn, which might be a little bit better, actually. And then I can save this Thraven Inspector for the following turn to where I go Inspector Bushwhack. And then is that lethal? That might be lethal because I'm going to put counters on both of these. And that, then when I surge a Bushwhacker, it's going to be two plus four is six plus five from the Loxodon is going to be five is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's exaxes. Okay, you know what? We're going to go for that. I'm going for it. Please don't disrupt me, because next turn I got lethal. Come on. It's got to be a surprise. Like, I could have played Thraben there and convoked out the Loxodon with the Thraben Inspector also, but um, I need something to, to trigger Surge on the Bushwhack. Come on, this is it. Don't kill my junk. This is my junk. Grow Spiral. Stomping Grounds. So, you know, the problem is they can live by fetching out a Dwarven Mine. That's the thing. If they have a fetch land here, they can go and get a Dwarven Mine and stop us. Don't anger. Come on. They did fetch, too. So they're at 12. So even if they do anger here, I might still have lethal, right? No, that's four plus nine. No, that's nine damage. Okay. Oh, Farsic, that's it. Oh, are they getting the Dwarven Mine? Oh, no Dwarven Mine. All right, we got it. Oh, yes. Okay, there's their Dwarven Mine because they ramped with the... Oh, man. Galve Blast, too? No, it's got to be three, but Inspector. Make a token. Surge Bushwhack number two. And they they could also still have it if they um have another fetch. Oh no, they don't have it. Sweet. Is was that lethal around the, the dwarven mine? Because then that'd be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, that wouldn't be lethal, but yeah, they're just going to be too slow. Even if they went in Polymorph for an Embergle next turn, we would have still went wide enough to get around it. Nice. That's a really cool deck that um, not many people have picked up and more people should. It's kind of like broken if you think about it. Just get to get to four mana, get to your fourth land, fetch out a Dwarven Mine, and then Polymorph for Indomitable Creativity it, and then boom, Embergle. It's basically a deck that says... Can you win by going land, 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 Emrakul? It's basically asking you that question, because it is going to happen every time. Land, 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 Emrakul. Is that good enough to win in modern? And if you think that is, then pick up this deck, because it's going to do that every time. Got a game here against Agent All Set. And yes, we're going to be on the play with some Boros, Hyper, All in Aggro. And we're going to be Mulligan in this Zero Lander. And this one looks a lot better. So let's keep that and throw away a Dark Steel Citadel. So the plan is turn one, Memnite, Koldatha, turn two, Dark Steel Citadel, Koldatha. Yeah. So throw away one Dark Steel because I already have the other. All right. Memnite. Now, it's cool that we're going up against Agent All Set because we just played against Agent All Set in Commander last Monday. So I remember Agent All Set from the Commander stream. I don't remember what deck they were playing, but. If I remember correctly, they were one of those very extremely slow players that I always complain about. When somebody doesn't know how to auto-yield or, you know, pass priority. 
I think Agent Allset was one of those guys. Or gals, either or. Just send a DM on Discord? All right, I'll check it out. Oh yeah, Phil, um, wasn't, wasn't it you that I asked a question to on Discord? No, no, that was Cybershade. What if Foothills? Okay, so it's uh, Shadow. Crocs, what if Foothills? Temple Garden. What, what kind of a deck plays Mishra's Bobble in Temple Garden? That is interesting. All right, this is my game plan. Six one ones. Can you dig it? Literally, can you dig them? That's usually that's what it was called back in the day of Magic the Gathering. Berry, berry target creature. Can you dig these? Yield management in MTGO EDH games is a skill unto itself, especially as a board state grows and you get free sack abilities and such. Yeah, it's actually a skill curve on Moto. Learning how to tap your mana, tap your lands when you don't need them, right click and press no possible play yield all, that's all it takes. That's literally all it takes. And if you have like a zero drop in hand or an ability to activate, you're going to have to right click and press yield through this turn at the beginning of everybody's turn, but at least um, the option's there. Commune with nature, interesting. Oh, Hall of the Bandit Lord, I know exactly what this is, but I don't think we're dead next turn. We could be. Um, Do I venerated Loxodon for full value here, or do I leave some back? I think I'm going to go full value. Full value. Let's get in there for two. Which I would have otherwise gotten there for four, so it's not big of a difference, not that big of a difference, and we're we're not losing any any clock power here. So if they have the combo, it's going to be um, devoted druid with haste, tap it, tap another land to play vizier, and then go off. So yeah, we could definitely die here. So this uh, this is all in Vizier. So they run Mishra's Bobble and Street Wraith to essentially have a 52 card deck. They're just they're literally filler. Like that's that's what it's there for. And they shocked, so that's a bad sign. If they go Druid Vizier here, they grabbed a Druid, so they have the Druid. The question is, do they have Vizier? So this is exactly the play I was talking about. Play a hasty Druid. Tap it, tap the land. And white source and vizier. This deck lost once upon a time though, so. But they still got it. Don't need no once upon a time. But let's see if they have the win con, the mana sink. They got it, we're scooping. Obviously. You hate tapping your lands. You hover over upkeep on the bar where you set stops and right click on to select yield until here, my turn. Oh, that's a good idea. Yield into your turn. So you literally just like, as soon as you pass your turn, it just, it's going to yield all until it comes back to you. That's a great idea. So yeah, learning all those skills is like, it's actually a skill curve on Moto. But I would love to just, like, every Monday when I play Commander on stream, I would just love to go up against nothing but people who know how to do that. <laughs> it would be splendid to have quicker Commander games. But, um, you know, some people are new. Can't, can't argue with that. Some people are new. Because I, I didn't know these tricks, too, when I started. So maybe they just straight up have the Ballista in hand. Okay, um, I'm gonna let them know. Uh, show me Ballista 
x equals one and I will scoop. There it is. All right, so we definitely need Gal Blast here. But that deck plays uh, Giver of Runes, but still. Bring in Gal Blast over um, three Spring Leaf Drums and a uh, Experimental Frenzy. Don't need, the Experimental Frenzy is gonna be a little bit too slow here, so let's do it like that. Um, MTGO isn't exactly an intuitive program either. And all right. And do they have something to do with infinite mana? Yes, they did. They had the Ballista. And a month ago, there was a Reddit thread asking for MTGO UI fixes to make Commander games smoother, so crossing fingers on that. Oh yeah, there's a lot of additions that would be want, that a lot of people want for Moto that, that Wizards doesn't do. Like, I would love if they fixed this right here, the whole submit deck thing. Look at this. If I was like, oh wait, I'm not ready yet. Bring back an Easter and Frenzy. It does not unsubmit. It still submits. Like... As soon as I move something out of my sideboard into my mainboard, I'm like, that that's me saying, hey, Moto, stop. Hold on. I'm not done. I'm not done. Stop. Wait. Wait. But it's just like, nope, you already clicked submit five seconds ago. You're not done. I mean, you're, you're done already. You're, you're done. Screw you. <laughs> that's what it does. It's like, I, yeah, like I click submit right here and I, like I say I'm done, but I'm like, wait, I want experimental frenzy. Give me that. And it's just like, too late. You should have not clicked submit earlier. It should auto unsubmit. And that's how Moto used to always be. Whenever you move something out of your sideboard into your main board, even after clicking submit, it would auto sub auto unsubmit so that you have more time. It used to do that. I don't know why they removed it. I have no idea. It was perfectly fine. <laughs> and yeah, um, there is some other, other minor things uh, to change. Also, also another thing that, that I would change, um, I, this is kind of a rude thing. This is kind of a rude thing, but if somebody's AFK for like, say three minutes, just make them just auto lose, auto lose the game. Cause arena has that and arena games go by so much quicker because there's the timer, the timer bar ticking down. And like, even though there's like, the game has like a 50 minute limit, still it gives you a little sub timer. Like if you're gone for three minutes, you're, you're out. And that makes the games go by quicker because like nobody can go go take go get the mail and eat a sandwich while while you just have to sit here and wait for them. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, we're gonna be on the play. And uh that looks good. Let's keep it. Um All right, so let's just go Ornithopter, Koldatha. And then next turn we'll go Koldatha plus Signal Pest. And then we're just going to go all in with the six tokens and the Signal Pest. Fluffy lost last night because he left the cleanup steps some broken glass. Wait, what? Hold on. Ooh, devastating summons. I would love to play that, but hold on a second. Let me go signal pest. And Koldatha rebirth on Darksteel Citadel. Get in there for three. Oh, Fluffy had to go clean up broken glass and lost the timer. That makes sense. You gotta do what you gotta do. Because Fluffy, Fluffy has a dog, right? If I remember correctly. So you don't want a dog stepping on no broken glass. Gotta, gotta have your priorities straight. You can lose a moto game if it means you're gonna not have to like go to the vet and get stitches on your doggy. He didn't have outs, he was gonna lose anyways. Yeah, but if, if, you're, if you didn't have outs and you're gonna lose anyways, just concede. Make it easier for the other person. Save everybody some time. Okay, they do have the hall. So 
But if they have Simeon Spirit Guide here, they can win. Because all they have to do is just go Simeon Spirit Guide, Hasty Druid, and then make white mana with the, the, the Mana Morphos, and then play Vizier, and then win. He did have outs? Oh. I always mistake the word did with didn't, which is a, a terrible word to mistake. There's a druid. Okay, let's find out. Do you got it? Yo, Affinity for MTG, long time no see. I haven't heard your name in like two years. Seen you around on Twitter, I think. Good to see ya. Thanks for the follow. How's the channel been doing? Okay, they summoners packed, but they got what? Cause they cannot, oh, they got Wild Cantor to make uh, white mana. And they can sack Wild Cantor for white mana and play the Vizier. So just nice solid turn to win. Turn to nut draw, got everything in your opener. All right, turn two, everything in your opener, nut draw. Let's see that win con. Show me that win con. Doing well enough. Walking Ballista off, commune with nature, and that'll do it. GG. Nice solid turn, too. The deck don't need no once upon a time. Got a game here against Al Dente Bob, and we're going to be on the draw here with some all in Boros aggro, and that is going to be keep. It's a little slow, but I'll try it. So I'm trying, uh, the reason I have my headphones on right now, YouTube, is because I'm testing the sound settings on Moto to figure out if I can add sounds back but not have the crazy weird MTG arena shenanigans they added. See, it's like, right now it's making no sounds. I'm play Battlefield Forge. I'm going to play, oh, I drew Koldatha, nice. See, look at that, look, what is that sound effect? You hear that? See, that's new. I don't like that. I don't want that. And there was no sound effect when those entered. Usually before, it would go ting. And that was fine. But now what is happening? Oh, come on, deck. Please give me a second land. And right there. See, when the Arid Mesa went to the graveyard, it would normally go whoosh. And then when the mountain came in, it would go whoosh. You know, like, that's what it would do before. But, like... What is happening now? Springleaf drum. What see what happens when I do that? I hover over things and it just like goes. I don't like that. I doubt they're trading with Bob here. So it's just just uh, Kroxa just. Oh, Slighty Skelemental, definitely for sure. It's a Krosa deck. Um, all right. What do I do about these sound settings? So I don't want general, but then that would turn down everything, right? So what if I to do in... Whoa! That scared me. Monka. See, there's the sound. There's the sound when it deals combat damage to a player. So I'm going to ditch Devastating Summons and Reckless Bushwhacker. That is so loud in my ears. Is that what I want, though? Is that the sound effects I'm looking for? All right, so main phase. This is my turn, right? That's their main phase? No, this is my main phase. All right, so I'm going with... Draven Inspector... What is, what the heck? What about alerts? No, cards, cards. 
Is that something? Um, spring leaf drum. Is that a good sound right there? The card sound? Just every time I... You see that one thing on tap, it goes... <laughs> they got a Kroxa off of dang Confidant. Oh, don't make me discard my venerated Loxodon, please. Unearth Skelemental. And they play another Skelemental. Okay, now we die. Okay, what do we want here? Galv Blast? Take out Experimental Frenzy and three Springleaf Drums. And run it like that. I don't need Torment, Tormod's Crypt for their unearth. I don't expect them to survive by the point where they unearth Skelemental, but they do have a lot of cheap removal and interactions, so they could. Because if they're swinging with Skelemental at us, I doubt they're going to have, like, they're going to be tapping out and also have no blockers by that time if they're swinging at us with the Skelemental, so we're going to be good to go. Although, what if we have a bomb in hand that we're waiting to play and they make us discard it? That's the problem. But do I want that card sound effect is, is the question. Is that what I want? What is alerts? Let me check and see what alerts is. Whoa! Whoa! That is loud. Would you like to play first? Yes. Um. Mm. If I don't get thought seized, or if I don't get inquisitioned, and I draw a third land, I can go devastating summons bushwhacker. Or I can go turn two Bushwhacker off an Ornithopter. So questionable, but I really don't want to go to five. All right, you know what? I'm going to go for the turn three Bushwhacker. See, now that's so weird. I don't know if I like that. See what happens when we pass the turn. See what sound it makes. I don't like that. I'm gonna turn alerts off. I think the best one is card. That's so weird. Maybe we just have none. Let me know in the comments down below. If this match does make it into YouTube, let me know what you think. In the comment section. Coolcraft exemplar. I mean, might as well get it out while we can, right? I mean, I could crack a clue. You know, I am going to go to a craft exemplar. I'm going to go all in because next turn. I could just go if I draw my third land, I go Ornithopter, Devastating Summons, Bushwhacker and hit you for like 12. Oh, no. Well, there goes that plan. They kept in Thoughtseize against an all in aggro deck, but I guess since we are an all-in aggro deck, we rely heavily on certain pieces, so one Thoughtseize could throw us up royally. Dang. Well, I don't want these devastating summons tokens to be in bolt range, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wait until next turn and make four four tokens. That way they're not in bolt range. 
Although they didn't bolt there. Since they didn't bolt there, I might do it now. I am going to do it now. So, I still have this Battlefield Forge, so I can still cast any one drops that I draw into, like Bowmat Courier, Signal Pest, Thraven Inspector, Toolcraft Exemplar. Like, so I still have a lot I can cast with this one Battlefield Forge. And also, I can cast uh, Loxodon, Venerated Loxodon, if I wanted to, but I don't think I will, because I have nine power to start swinging with. And hopefully, they can't deal with it, because their blockers are like Bob. Croxa goes to the grave, and I don't care about it. And um, Lightning Skill Elemental, I don't care about. So. Yeah, there's not a lot that I care about, so these these three three power guys should be pretty good. I hope, as long as they're out of removal. Okay, now we're left with two three threes. Return clock, I guess. What are these tokens looking like? They're just like big magna droths. So what is that creature? Mag draw magmoth. I forget what it's called. It's like this red five drop. Position takes their wishbacker. Third land. Dark confidant don't block well. Locks it on. Would have been funny if we inquisition if they inquisitioned us when we had that in hand. Really hard to whiff an Inquisition against us, but they're going to chum block and go to six. I have lethal on board. Come on. Come on. Don't find an answer. Don't find an answer. Come on. We're right there. We are right here. We have committed. Oh, man. Oh, Matt Courier, we can play that. Come on, dude. We are an inch away. Did we do it? Did we do it? Did we got it? Come on. Cycles and unearth. No! They top deck to push. They top deck to push. Is that going to be how it ends? No way. They cycle and earth and top deck to push to stay alive. Are you kidding me? Now watch them go push again here. Like, bolt. Come on. Cycles another on Earth into another push, I assume? Into a swamp? Give me another Bowman Courier. Signal Pass ain't bad. Last card. Oh, they're staying alive. They have a bolt. Hello. How are you hanging on that long? Well, you're in top deck mode and you can't crack your fetch for another red source. So, uh, McLovin94, thank you for the follow. Didn't you follow me like two years ago? I remember that username. And they didn't have it. Oh, man. And our, our opening hand sucked. And we mulliganed too. So, And we also got thought seized. I can't believe we still won that. Alright, but we're going on to game number three, but we're on the draw this time, so it's going to be hard. Put on the song request. Um, We can't put on song request right now because we're recording for YouTube, and we would get copyright, and also the video would be annoying. So, um, can't do that unless we're playing a non-MTG game. Uh, Yeah, this hand is fine actually pretty good i like this hand as long as we don't get thought seized Ooh, what did i do don't thought seize me dude oh i had such a good hand why did you have to ruin it i was gonna go turn to full value locks it on like completely full value with koldatha and bowman courier and everything sucks See, Thoughtseize is such a busted card. It's just, this card has the power to suddenly make your hand suck. Eh. 
and a push. <gasps> They're stuck on one. All right, I need another zero drop creature to be able to play this Loxodon. Come on. Dude, stop drawing answers. I guess if they're not drawn lands, I guess their hands just stack with answers. They drew their second land. Now they can bob. Another thought sees. All right. Well, I guess the best take is Ornithopter. Because Ornithopter gets me up to these venerated Loxodons quicker. Yep, they take the Ornithopter. You love Mana Traders as a brewer is great for you? You're working on a modern Unearthed Croaks of Rack deck right now? Yeah, Mana Traders is like the savior of MTGO. It's like... Mana Traders makes playing MTGO possible for so many people. And it would be really difficult to make content without them. Like, seriously. You know... MTGO content would be hardly possible for anybody without mana traders. Just because you, you would have to buy every single deck you play. Like, that would be a fortune. Like, you'd have to be absolutely rich and do content creation just for fun as a rich person. But mana traders makes it all possible. All right, another Thoughtseize. Takes Galv Blast. Do they have another Bob? All right, it's kind of risky. You're at nine, but these Venerated Loxodons are kind of dead right now. I might just go for that. Yeah, let's go for this. So... Cat four, let's devastating summon, sack everything. Then venerated Loxodon. Make two five fives and a four four. That's pretty decent, but that will that win? Let's find out. A couple pushes is all it takes to stop this. Let's see if they have a couple pushes. I wouldn't doubt it. They already use one push. Bolts don't do anything here. Goblin Rabble Master is fine. Oh yeah, using Dreadhorde Arcanus. This could be a Dreadhorde Arcanus deck. Like in this deck, I definitely play Dreadhorde Arcanus all the time over um, Dark Confidant. But Dark Confidant's respectable too. I could see playing Dark Confidant. All right, get in there. I thought they were going to, like, fetch and push a token and then double block venerated Loxodon. Leave me with just a 5-5. Five five. But now I think we got it, unless they have a Wrath. Another Rabble, and they have one card left. I don't think this will do it. This ain't it, Chief. Unearth, another Ravel. Nice. And I don't gain haste until end of turn. I mean, they're technically alive. Not if I draw a land, though. A land is lethal. That ain't a land, but... It'd still be good. But they cannot fetch that Marsh Flats. Oh, wait, no, they already have four mana there. So, yeah, if they actually have... Uh, Wrath effect in their deck. They can get it. But still, a top deck land would be lethal with the Bomac Courier. Are we getting the Gs in the chat? Glad you enjoy. Alright, they're scooping it up, GG. And uh, I can't believe we actually beat that deck because that's like one of those interaction removal dot decks. 
you know, they are kind of like discard and aggro too, but they have so much like cheap removal that I thought that it was going to be like impossible for us. But the thing is, when you have a lot of damage based removal, like K command and bolts, it makes it hard to deal with things with four toughness. And surprisingly, this all in aggro deck can make things with four toughness. Either locks it on Kratom, there's a locks it on himself, or he can just devastating summons to make two five fives. Either or. It works. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. We like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut for the videos, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. Uh, so today we're going to be speeding up the next four rounds in the video. And I did get to have a lot of games not sped up because today's deck was pretty quick. Each round was give or take 10 minutes, but some of them are a little bit longer, like that last one and all the ones that we have speed, um, sped up here today. So uh, jumping right into the first sped up round, uh, this was against Black White Aristocrats, and this was the second longest round in the entire stream. So it starts off pretty normal, you know, winning the die roll and then winning game number one super quick. Uh, game number two... Oh, that was game number one right there. But game number two goes a little bit more different. So I bring in Tormod's Crypt because I assume that they're going to have like Rally the Ancestors because Aristocrats, as you know, can't have Rally the Ancestors. It can't have Return to the Ranks. It can have Immortal Servitude and especially a Vampire's deck like this. Uh, so many different kinds of Vampire's decks. They're like Vampires is a tribe that the decks can be built in very different ways. Either it can be Aristocrats based off Sacrifice Synergies and death triggers such as this one or it can be more just a fat aggro deck that has like champion of dusk and soren imperious blood lord to cheat out champion of dusk and i'm surprised that this deck didn't have that soren synergy with bloodgast um but you know it is what it is and the game the, what was making this round very difficult was the cordial vampire because the cordial vampire says that whenever a creature dies not only creature you control whenever anybody's creature dies you put a 1-1 one, one counter on each vampire you control. And they have a lot of lifelinkers in there. Through a dead martyr of dusk, an indulgent aristocrat. So they can potentially make really fat lifelinkers. And so it was really difficult. And I really needed to galve blast cordial vampires on first sight, but it's hard to do that. Because they have sack outlets and they can grow it in response. And I had to mulligan down to four in game number three. So by default, it was a loss. Um, but not only that, when you have cordial vampire out and you cast witch's vengeance which they did top deck at the very end of this game, and they can kill three goblins at once, it's going to trigger their blood artists and their, their double um, cordial vampires three times, and it just it grows that, that lifelinking indulgent aristocrat way too big to the point where it turns into like a 7-7 seven, seven lifelinker. And at that point, there's really nothing I can do. So it's kind of an unfortunate matchup where they have things like Witch's Vengeance and giant lifelinkers and... You know, things like Blood Artists, where when you when creatures die, they gain life, and that completely counteracts our plan. So it's kind of a hard matchup. But let's go into the next game. And this was against Bant Snow, but not Spiky Bant Snow, like you saw earlier in the video. And Spiky Bant Snow, that there was another one that we actually cut out of the video because it was redundant. But this is a Bant Snow deck that I respect the heck out of because it was a brew, a brew Bant Snow. It was based around Merit Lage's Slumber. So at your upkeep, if you have 10 snow permanents, you sack it and get a Merit Lage token, which is a 2020 flying indestructible. And so they had like Abominable Tree Folk, they had Onthan Isis to exile my creatures, and conveniently that Scrying Sheets and the Abominable Tree Folk and the, the Onthan Ice are all snow permanents. They got the Astrolabes, the, the Ice Fang Codals, they're all snow permanents, and then they can just sack that Merit Lage of Slumber and then make a 2020. Now they made the 2020 there, but I actually got them down low enough to where I can just swing through it because that 2020 doesn't have haste. It was scary, but it didn't have haste. Now game number two goes a little bit different because I because I kind of wasn't paying attention to the Merit Lage of Slumber they had. And so I kind of wasn't really counting their permanence. And then they ended up getting Merit Lage that caught me off guard. You'll see it here in a moment. But yeah, they were slowly but surely building up snow permanence because those Aunt and Isis are snow enchantments. And I didn't notice that at first. So, and, and then the double Astrolabe as well. It's a really spicy deck. And it just, it feels like that Merit Lage of Slumber with all those snow permanents is quite decent. It goes off way quicker than you think it does. And a 2020 Indestructible, I hear, is pretty good at winning the game, according to Legacy Turbo Depths. Um, so, 
I, I go pretty wide and I have a good board, but they, they, they're able to slow me down enough with the early game double on the nice to the point where I'm struggling to rebuild and the Merit Lage kills me. And then on to game number three. Uh, we get to be on the play. And you know how things go when we get to be on the play. You've seen the rest of the video. So being on the play, we just get that turn one Koldatha and double Memnite so that on turn two we can have seven power. And uh, I saw them play a snow-covered swamp, and that scared me a little bit because if snow-covered swamp means that they probably have Dead of Winter, but thank goodness they didn't draw it. So I'm able to just attack them down. and They couldn't sweep away all seven of my creatures that I had on turn two. So that'll do it. So we go on to the next round, and this is against uh, Dredge. Now, I salt scooped here because look at what they do. Uh, Shriekhorn, and then they tap it, and they mill over double Narc Amoeba off their first Shriekhorn hit, and I instantly salt scooped because I was literally looking at that, that opening hand I had there, and I was telling chat, it's okay that we're going up against Dredge because all of their stuff says that it can't block, you know, blood gas can't block, and, you know, the prize amalgam enters tapped, so there's really not a lot to worry about except Narc Amoebas. And what do they do off the first Shriekhorn? They hit double Narc Amoeba. That was the craziest, most insane luck that I've ever seen. And so I instantly scooped. In game number two, since we were on the play there, I just completely destroyed their face, as this deck does, and that would have been game. That would have been it. This round would have been over. Um, but we're going on to game number three after that salt concession in game one. And, uh, they got the Shriekhorn again and they mill over like Golgari Thug, a couple blood ghasts, uh, Stinkway Damp, and then they even had Cathartic, they, they topped that Cathartic Reunion, which allowed them to discard the Stinkway Damp and, and Golgari Thug and just dredge over everything and dredge over a Ox of Agonist. And then they, um, they buy back the Ox of Agonist, which is going to go crazy with the dredgers and they end up milling over quad um quad creeping chill and then they burn us for four with with conflagrate so i actually got completely burned out by a dredge deck and that's never happened to me before but when you hit a quad creeping chill and a conflagrate yeah i'm dead so that was pretty insane i got super close though and i tried my best but we go on to the next game and this was against rg ponza and now this game, this round was very similar to that dredge round because in game number one here, I completely misplayed because I wasn't paying attention. So I, I was like looking at chat and I was like talking about stuff and I didn't realize because these four creatures I had on board that I'm swinging with right now, they're actually lethal the following turn and all I have to do is chump with this Memnite, but I didn't. And then I died to a bolt, but I was supposed to chump block the, the, the blood braid elf there because I had no reason at all not to. That was literally just chump block the blood braid attack back for lethal. That was literally it. Um, but they ended up getting us. So going on to game number two, um, they get a really good start. Like turn, they got the nut draw like Arbor Elf into Utopia Sprawl and turn two Huntmaster of the Fells. They don't sweep in our board, but I, the, the anger of the gods does not sweep the Loxodon Smiter. Or not the Loxodon Smiter, the, the venerated Loxodon. So it ends up getting there and they scoop to it. I don't know why, they were still alive. Um, but game number three, I, I get a really nice start and I go super wide, but they end up blood braiding into anger of the gods. And then my board is completely swept and then they end up rebuilding with tireless tracker, making a blocker that's too big for me to swing through and I just end up scooping it up. So again, just like the dredge match, uh, GG to RG Ponza. So we ended up with six total wins. And uh, this deck being really all in was kind of rough. Um, we did get an actually decent record. It, like, it was not bad, but I felt like it could have been better. And playing upon playing this deck, I really feel like the deck creator in that league that he 5-0'd, he or she 5-0'd, just got really lucky. Because this deck really needs some great opening hands to be able to just do what it wants to do. And if you don't get a good opening hand, or if you get thought seized... Things can go really bad really quick. And, you know, just, just one thoughts he's taking your venerated Loxodon or one thoughts he's taking your Bushwhacker or, you know, you have really important pieces in your hand that you need. And, or like if you turn, if you're on the draw and you get your Koldoth or a birth taken and then suddenly you're, you're stuck with a venerated Loxodon you can't cast. It just kind of feels bad. And there's a lot of thoughts he's in modern. Um, but it's, it's a very affordable deck. And if you have a nice, friendly um, LGS or whatever, I mean, not at the moment because of everything going on, but soon, soon when everything's back to normal 
and you wanted to pick up a really a really cool deck that can cheese out some wins and actually do decent in a friendlier setting um this deck can do wonders and it's but the problem is it'll win really quick like burn does so then you're stuck there for 40 minutes waiting for everybody else to finish that was the problem back when i used to play burn but i just have a soft spot in my heart for like all in decks it's like it was one of the first decks i built when i got into modern a long time ago the first deck that i one of the first decks that I built getting into modern was Storm the Storm Entity deck. Remember the Storm Entity deck uh Storm Entity from uh Future Sight, that card? And um it was the first deck I built when I got into modern and or I think it was the second. I think I started on Burn and then I went to Storm Entity. But yeah, so just I have a long history of loving those those all in, just like I'm gonna do everything on turn one or two. And so nowadays a deck like this ain't bad. Uh, seeing as the, the the record we got was not terrible, I would say this is as good as it gets for an all-in deck. And like I said in the intro, that Boros uh, Tokens deck tech we just did a deck tech of a Pioneer was a Boros aggro deck based around artifacts and toolcraft exemplar, and this one is too. So it just turns out that this card is just, I don't know, decks with this card are just pretty decent. And I really love the Koldatha Birth, Koldatha Birth Venerated Loxodon Synergy, Koldatha Birth Bushwhacker Synergy, Koldatha Birth uh, plus um, Signal Pest Synergy. But I gotta admit that the one thing in this deck that I didn't like was Reckless Bushwhacker, because he requires most of the time three mana. Because sometimes you you use your zero drop on the first turn to sack to Koldatha Birth, or you wanted to play your Memnite in the first turn, and you just have. Sometimes you just don't have anything to to surge out Reckless Bushwhacker except another one drop because look how heavy on the one drops this deck is. And so it would make it seem like you need to go do this on turn three. But since this is only a 16 land deck, hitting your third land and getting to that on curve on turn three is kind of hard sometimes. So I found myself stuck with a Bushwhacker a lot. So while it makes a lot of sense with this deck, I feel like it was probably the weakest link. And it's cool because decks like this have a lot of things that you can try out. Really, all in decks you can brew around with so much. And um, yeah, so mess around with it. I guess that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button down below if you did. And subscribe if you're new for the spiciest of gameplay every other day. If you want to try this deck out for yourself on Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code MarinMoon to save 15% off. And you can rent today's deck. And if you want to buy this day's buy today's deck in paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link. And anything you purchase through that link really supports the channel. Thank you to all the sponsors, the patrons, and the Twitch chat. And thank you for watching. I'm going to get on out of here. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.